Hi, what's in the best marketing plan and how do you pull the best marketing plan together? I went to Googling to find that answer and here's what five articles that I looked at told me. Ask tough questions, describe your situation, list goals for one year, identify why people will buy, your target, your competition, your tactics and your brand positioning strategy, set a budget, write it in somewhere between one and 200 pages, take two months to plan and communicate it widely. So let me take you quickly to those five articles because I want to explain why that's the worst advice you could get. What that'll build you, now in fairness, I'm aggregating the views of five different authors, but none of them nailed it. The, what that aggregate view will get you is a kind of 101-ish response. It'll be a marketing plan that nobody understands, nobody follows, and certainly nobody writes about in books later as success stories. I'll show you quickly why that's the case, and then I'll argue what you do need to put in the best marketing plan. First article from Henri de Vries. Um, I'm gonna guess he's pronouncing it Henri rather than Henry with a name like that, but who knows. Uh, Henri or Henry, thank you for your article. Really, really short. Basically, he's quoting a guy called Jim Horan who runs a company called The One Page Business Plan. And guess what he says? You should have a one page business plan. For all that he has a vested interest in that argument, I agree with him. Uh, next article. A uh, couple coming up from Entrepreneur. So uh, the essential argument here is that a business plan can have between 12 and 200 pages. It needs to cover one year and take two months to build and you need to communicate it widely. I disagree, it should be one page. Uh, it should have a longer horizon than a year and you should build it faster and you should review it more often. And frankly, you should hook it into your actual so you actually know what's going on so you know what to change mid-course. Um, so but in particular, I disagree with the communicator widely. I hate plans that are built and then communicated. Build it together, then you don't need to communicate it. They know what the plan is. Stick it up on a wall because they already know what it says because they were part of it. Next article from, uh, also from Entrepreneur. Thank you guys. Five steps to create a marketing plan. All right, they say basically you need to have a situation analysis. You describe your audience, list goals. Um, identify your strategy and tactics and set a budget. All sounds okay, but I disagree. Forget about situational analysis. I think that's a 400 year old concept that you spend uh, any time at all in your plan describing what is already so. Mostly people know what is so, but secondly, it encourages that really sort of last year plus 20% thinking that's unhelpful. So don't bother, don't include a situation analysis. And it's missing this critical, um, I want to call it if this then that uh, logic. Um, uh, if you're trying to solve problem X, then you must be targeting market Y. There's none of that in these recommendations. And I think that seriality is critical. Uh, it's missing. Um, how to create effective marketing plan from Catherine, uh, try again, from Catherine Alain. Um, so, Let's get to her article. There we go, I missed, uh, clicked the wrong buttons. Um, all right, essentially what she's arguing, identify why people will buy, identify your target, identify your competitors, build your brand positioning and use social media and mobile. I fundamentally agree with where she started on this. Start with the why, I think that's really good advice. Why, now she's argued the need, I would argue the problem, but for the minute, let's forgive that difference. She's arguing, start with why they even need your product or service, not what it is or who they are. And I think she's bang on there. Um, then moves on to identifying the target. And I wanna just make a point there. Basically, I don't disagree with any of her recommendations, but again, I wanna see that serial link. If you're trying to solve problem X, then you should be targeting customer segment Y. That's missing. Maybe it's implied, I think it needs to be spelled out because we need to be led a little in our planning process. Um, but generally, I agreed with most of what you said. Final one I wanna show you is market your book like a best-selling author. Um, now, clearly it's a very narrow context and I haven't written a book for over 10 years, so what would I know? Um, basically, this article though is full of 75 things worth thinking about. 
I don't mind checklists. I know they're always just assembled. They lack context because it's not a consultant. They're not trying to recommend that you should do these. They're saying these are 75 that you should think about. And I quite like checklists. They just make you think. In a minute, I'm going to give you a framework for how to choose which of those checklisty things to do. But for all that, if you're marketing a book, great source. But even if you're not, check out the 75 tips. It's worth a read. So as I said earlier, I'll give you my spin on this shortly, but let me first honour what they've said and restate what I think their net conclusions are. Ask tough questions, describe your situation, list your goals for one year, identify why people will buy, identify your target, your competition, your tactics, your brand positioning, set a budget, write it in somewhere between one and 200 pages. Uh, clearly that's not very helpful advice. Uh, take two months to plan and communicate it widely. I've got three main problems with that. The first is that there's no if this, then that. And I've mentioned that a little bit when I was reviewing the articles. Basically, if this argument is so, how can I say that? There is seriality in planning. This is so, that must be so. So, firstly, there's no seriality. Secondly, uh, there's no frame, really. We need to have a single page plan that people will read and follow and understand. But thirdly, you need to build it together. You can't build a plan in splendid isolation and then share it with people. It's then your plan and they'll accept some of it and say, great, I now understand it, Hugh's got a great plan. No, no, Hugh having a great plan is terrible. We need to have a plan together. So you've got to build it together. There are my three issues with that. Let me rebuild that logic. Frankly, I'm going to use what they've done, but I'm going to rebuild it in what I think the order, the sequence and the importance is. And I'm going to drop a few things out that are frankly not important. Here are the nine lessons we've learned from building over 400 go-to-market plans. Firstly, plan quickly and often. Don't take forever. Secondly, involve everybody who needs to be there. If they know things or they need to buy in, they need to be in the room when you're planning. We usually target between six and 12 people in the room. Next, set your objectives for three years. There's no point building a one-year plan that assumes you're going to stop at the end of the year because you're never going to stop at the end of the year. So your momentum needs to continue at the end of the first year and it can only do that if you've described a second and a third year. Build three years worth of vision. Four, certainly start with the why and one of the authors mentioned that. We would argue the problem, not the need. What problem do you solve better than most? I and mean, why do people even need your solution or any solution from anybody at all? You know, what will happen if they do nothing? If the answer is not much, then that's what they'll do, not much. So start with the why in particular the problem. Number five, target the companies most affected by that problem. When you know what the problem is, think about who's actually most likely to have that problem because that's who your target market should be. Articulate a complete solution to that problem, but only for that market. But you know, if you can't offer the full solution, that's fine, still articulate a complete solution and tell them how to solve the other bits. Don't ask them to do it themselves because they'll go and make it up, they'll go and talk to others and they'll get contradictory advice. You need to at least articulate, otherwise provide the complete solution for the markets that you're targeting to the problem that you've chosen. Next, work out what the velocity needs to be to reach your goals. Why? Because the tactics need to generate, and this is now the eighth step, the tactics need to generate that velocity. So I need to know what the velocity is. What tactics will move my buyers through their journey at the required rate? And there is no such thing as a must do or a cool tactic. Whatever it will take to get them from A to B, and then whatever it'll take to get them from B to C, and then whatever it'll take to get them from C to D. There's no magic around the tactics, it's what will it take, what's the best way we know how to execute as a company to move them in those stages. And then finally, distill it to one page. Nobody, but nobody, even the author, doesn't read a long plan. You need it down to one page and you can stick it up on the wall and everybody walks past it and lives it or argues why it's wrong. That's what you need. Don't worry about situation analysis. Don't worry about competition in early or late. It's, um, frankly, it just doesn't matter. Focus on your customers. You only need to focus on competition in a hyper growth market. So just don't even worry about competition. I hope you enjoyed that. I did. Uh, clearly, I got a little bit excited uh, partway through that, so um, I hope that <laughs> came through positively. Anyhow, that's what I reckon you should do, nine steps. If you haven't already got one, get a copy of Funnel Plan. You can get a copy for free, or you can pay and get a lot more functionality. 
Uh, our version of the freemium model is you get forever for free a certain amount of functionality and rather than the whole thing for a limited time. Um, that's what we're doing at the moment anyway. So go to funnelplan.com, get a copy of a funnel plan for free and do all those things that I just argued you need to do and do it with lots of people. There's lots of reasons why you might want to take the paid version, but frankly, start with a free one. It's really good. And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to go get one. That's it. Lots more lined up for next week. Until then, may your funnel be full and always fun. Thank you this week. Tyler Owen was our intern for research. Uh, our five authors, Henry DeVry, or maybe Henri perhaps, um, uh, in uh, Forbes. Two entrepreneur articles. Thank you, Catherine Aline and Mindster Media. Thanks, Annika, for your amazing and consistent production. My name's Hugh McFarlane, and it was my absolute pleasure to script and present this week's show.